Hello friends, I am Sumit. Recently, Dr. Raghuram Rajan gave interview to Economic Times and uh, uh, he was answering some of the questions. So in, some, in one of the questions, he was asked uh, uh, what should Indian budget look like. So while answering that question, he talked about the possibility of rising the interest rates uh, in US economy in near future. So he was referring uh, to Fed tapering. Indirectly, he was referring to Fed tapering. So what is fat tapering? This video is mainly about that. Uh, what is fat tapering? How it is related to quantitative easing program of US Federal Reserve, which is the central bank of USA. So uh, I'm going to discuss these terms. I'm going to discuss uh, what is a self-fulfilling prophecy or self-fulfilling expectation, whatever you may like to call it. Uh, so uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, tap out and term. Uh, which we witnessed in 2013 in US economy. But before I jump to those terms, uh, it is important that uh, we should be familiar with, uh, with terminology of uh, bond markets. Uh, how it works, what is the relationship between price of bond and yield. Let me spend 2-3 minutes and then I'll come to the point. So, suppose if you need 100 rupees, and suppose I have money available with me. So you are going to come to me or I'm going to come to you if I need to lend some money to earn some return over it. I'm going to ask you, okay, look, give me some promissory note uh, uh, so that I can show this to you after one year that, okay, you need to pay me this much amount with some interest. So you are going to issue one bond, which is nothing but that promissory note mentioning how much interest I'm going to get after one year, two year or uh, whatever uh, the number of years I'm going to lend this money to you. So this promissory note would entailing all such uh, things, uh, the face value of it, uh, the face value of a promissory note, the uh, the rate of interest, okay? So suppose the face value of the bond is 100 rupees uh, and suppose the rate of interest is uh, 10%. So this remains fixed. And, uh, and, and the interest which I'm going to get after say one year, Suppose I need, I lend you uh, this money for one year, then uh, the interest which I'm going to get, that would, that would always be calculated as, as percentage of the face value. So I'm going to get 10 rupees because 10% 10 of 100 is 10 rupees. So that would be the interest I'll be getting after one year. Now, suppose uh, I require my money before the completion of one year. I'm in the dire need of my own money. But since uh, I lent you for one year, so I can't take it from you. I'll go to some other guy. Suppose this promissory note is credible. I go to another uh, friend of mine and tell him, okay, look, he's going to pay you uh, 100 rupees after one year along with the interest rate. You pay me uh, something less than 100 because I'm in the dire need of it. Okay, so I'm going to sell it. If I'm going to sell this bond, obviously the, uh, the, the, uh, there is more supply of bond Okay, if I'm if I'm in the need to get my money early, so I'm going to sell it, right? I'm going to make extra effort to sell it. So there will be more supply of bond. So naturally, in case of the uh, more supply of bond, the price of the bond is going to come down. Price of bond is nothing but the money which I'm going to get from this another new guy. So suppose he's going to give me 95 rupees. Okay. Is going to give me 95 rupees. I took my 95 rupees back. Okay. Now he is going to get 10 rupees because I told you the interest uh, is calculated as percentage of the face value. Face value still remains 100, but he is going to get 10 rupees on 95. He did not uh, spend 100 rupees to purchase his promissory note. He spent 95 rupees. For him, the yield is not 10%. For him, the yield is. 10 by 95, which would be more than 10%. Okay, so that's the yield. That's the difference between the rate of interest uh, and the yield. Okay, now, now you also, uh, uh, you're, you're also aware about the price of the bond. You're also aware about the yield. Now you can see there is negative relationship between the price of the bond and the yield. Earlier, the face value was equal to the price of the bond because I sold this bond at 100 rupees to the first guy. So the price of the bond was 100 rupees and the yield was 10%. Now the price is 95. 
so yield increased so there is negative relationship between price of bond and yield so far so good great now let's come to the point see whenever some economy faces some kind of slack uh, or say suppose any economy x is facing some recession in that case uh, that economy uh, basically use or deploy basically two main tools to solve the problem when i say solve the problem it 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 it, it means you know uh, enhancing the gdp growth rate or uh, rising up the uh, employment rate or uh, you know or or stabilizing the inflation rate in the economy okay those those should be the targets now the first tool is monetary policy and the second tool is fiscal policy sometimes depending upon the circumstances i'm not going to go deep into that much deep into that because uh, that's a very separate topic sometimes you know we have to deploy the combination of the two policies because uh, either of the policies remain uh, remain more or less uh, ineffective uh, uh, either of the policies not both of them at one time but some sometimes you know we have to deploy both the policies at one go so these are the two tools which any economy seeks to deploy to solve the problem what is monetary policy it is the intervention from the side of the central bank of economy to maneuver with the key policy rates say repo rate reverse repo rate i'm going to come to that uh, or they can engage or central bank can engage in open market operations to uh, change the liquidity level of liquidity in the economy what is fiscal policy it is the intervention from the government side so as to change the level of government expenditure in the economy so suppose if uh, if economy is facing recession so government is going to spend on infrastructure sector so there will be demand when you are going to spend on infrastructure say suppose you are going to build the bridge you are going to spend on it right so there will be more demand for cement there will be demand for other raw material so when whenever there will be more demand it will it would pro, it would uh, somehow prompt the producers to sell uh, or to produce that output that raw material right so it is going to uh, it is going to spur the economic activity in the same way uh, central bank can you know reduce the key policy rates like repo rate so that is going to reduce the borrowing cost for the for the investors in the economy so it is going to infuse liquidity in the economy and that is going to again you know uh, help the economy uh, revive as soon as possible so these are the tools okay and they 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 also uh, get deployed in the uh, other circumstances also suppose if economy is you know witnessing some inflation in that case uh, we know that you know uh, higher the liquidity in the economy uh, more inflation well, more possibility of having more inflation right so uh, there is need to take back some of the money okay because uh, too much money is chasing few, uh, too few goods so that is going to raise up the inflation so how you are going to solve that problem you are going to uh take back some money from the economy how you are going to do that you are going to increase the key policy rates okay or you are going to sell the bonds okay so uh so so far so good now when global financial crisis took place in 2008 uh after uh, sometime after that usa federal reserve that is the uh, central bank it engaged in quantitative easing program so quantitative easing program was nothing but But, but purchasing the government securities or bonds from the market from the market players so usa federal reserve engaged in bond purchase program every month they set target they are going i presume that they, they, that's how they, this would have worked and this uh, happened uh, this this kept happening for number of years when i last time when i uh, read it it was 2015 i read this term quantitative easing so what federal reserve sought to do it took uh, the securities from the people it, it like i i give you that example now i i purchased that promissory note it took back the government securities or instrument uh, financial instrument from the market players and gave them money so that there there should, there should be more liquidity in the economy why it, ha- it happened so as to revive the economy so as to uh, elevate the employment rate targets of such sort okay so this happened now fine you are at one end you are going to increase the liquidity in the economy but uh, somewhere down the line you have to take it back because if you have infused too much liquidity in the economy 
you basically you try to intervene because economy was you know uh, economy was uh, was in crumble to some extent so you provided some support but you are not going to provide this support for forever in fact you are going you are going to you, you will be requiring this uh, to withdraw this support at some extent because it is going to uh, it is going to raise concern of inflation in near future right so basically in 2013 uh, you know uh, someone pointed out in fact their federal chair ben burnack uh, uh, implicitly or explicitly announced the withdrawal of this uh, this support or he said that you know we would be you know slowing down our uh, quantitative easing program that is nothing but fat tapering what is taper taper is nothing but narrowing of something right so maybe they might have reduced the uh, monthly uh, the, the, they might have reduced the monthly limit of bond purchase from the market okay so they announced the withdrawal of this uh, this uh, monetary uh, uh, support or or, or they, they they basically hinted at the uh, less bond purchase every month they're on they're onwards this cause taper tantrum what is tantrum tantrum is some kind of some disruption okay some uh, some outburst so when uh, market players uh, got to know about it they you know they 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 they, they basically they felt that us is going to uh, uh reduce the bond purchase in months to come what does it mean it means there would be less demand for bond uh, uh, bonds there would be less demand for such financial instruments in months to come or you can say there would be more supply basically supply would be more than demand and i just gave you the example classic example uh when there would be more supply or there would be less demand of bond in that case price uh, in that case when there will be less demand uh the price of the bond would be less and price of the bond if the price of the bond would be less Uh, recalling the inverse relationship between price of bond and yield the yield is going to go up so we witnessed a very uh, a very high increase in the yields of government securities why these investors you know uh, uh, were in hurry to uh, you know sell their bonds because they they they, they thought that if you know uh, if if usa is uh, if federal reserve is going to reduce the bond purchase there would be less demand and after that price of the bond would fall so whatever bonds investors would holding at that time they thought that they would be incurring some capital loss because price of bond is going to fall down this this was their expectation by the way that that did not happen i'm going to come to this term uh, self fulfilling uh, prophecy this was their expectation that us if because of this announcement this announcement by the federal reserve chair uh, that you know they are going to reduce this uh, uh, they reduce the intensity of this quantitative easing program because of that the price of bond would fall and that would have them incurring uh, capital losses in months to come so they actually try to sell those they try to sell those bonds early before that happen so when they try to sell those bonds this actually made what happened this actually uh, made happened what they uh, uh, what they, they what they were worried about so they actually they actually uh, self fulfilled their expectation they, when when in the quest of selling their bonds they actually end up you know reducing the price of bond by themselves so usa actually did not uh, uh, withdraw that support immediately after that it took few more years to usa to withdraw that support even in 2015 as i told you in 2015 i also uh, read this term quantitative easing so that uh, nowhere you know we we witnessed any uh, reduction in the intensity of quantitative easing but just a mere mere expectation of uh, expectation of this happening led uh, the rise in the government yields that is called uh, that that was called as taper tantrum in the same way because of this pandemic now uh, usa federal reserve started pumping liquidity started pump sorry started pumping cash into the economy to enhance the level of liquidity in the economy okay so uh, it has been hap- it, it it happened for uh, what i mean pandemic hit the global economy in march 2020 right and till late october uh, we witnessed this uh, uh, pumping of uh, cash in the us economy but somewhere down the line as i told you uh, you have to withdraw that support right so 
because of the rising inflation concerns usa federal reserve decided to uh, to reduce that intensity okay so uh, so they are you know uh, somehow they are tapering that uh, that support tapering means narrowing narrowing down you are basically they are setting up the low monthly limits of uh, bond purchases so that is called uh, so you are aware about uh, fat tapering you are aware about taper tantrum uh, you are aware about self fulfilling uh, prophecy this is all i wanted to discuss uh, and you know uh, nowadays uh, economies are very well connected because of the globalization so uh, you cannot ignore what's happening uh, across the across the seas right uh, whatever uh, like whatever be the uh, rates uh, prevailing in other major economies like usa uh, that is going to have some bearing on emerging markets uh, other economies and india will not be spared to okay so india is going to uh, face some consequences of it so now since usa is you know uh, try to return the norm uh, try to uh, try to you know uh, engage in fat tapering so uh, investors might uh, flee to some extent uh, to usa to earn more return so uh, so basically indian uh, i mean central bank of our country uh, uh, would would need to do something about it so that was it uh, thank you so much for your time